Before I go on, let me make this clear. I am not an astronomer, remember that. I just accidentally discovered something in space which astronomers named after me. And I was able to do that through an online citizen science project called Galaxy Zoo. Now, to explain this Galaxy Zoo, I'll start close to home with a picture of our planet Earth. Um, I'll keep zooming out. This next one is the Sun, our most important star. And the Earth is now the little dot underneath it. Now, you probably already know this, but it's a nice reminder anyway. Together with these other planets, we form the solar system. They all dance around the Sun as well. And the solar system can be found in a galaxy, like this one. Now, in this picture, one pixel would be too big to represent the Sun. And if that didn't blow your mind yet, we have billions of these galaxies in our universe. And that's where Galaxy Zoo comes in. Back in 2007, there were a couple of astronomers. Um, they were doing research into these galaxies. They were studying their shapes to learn about how they form. And they had a data set of about a million pictures. These pictures were automatically taken with the Sloan Digital Sky Survey Telescope, and nobody had seen them before. One of the astronomers, Kevin Shavinsky, he had seen 50,000 of them in one week before he decided there's just not enough coffee in the world to go on like that. Uh, the, the other astronomer, Chris Lintod, he came up with the idea, let's put these pictures online and ask the public to help us, people like you and me. They thought, we'll just we'll put them there, we'll explain what we need from them, and we'll let them help us. And that's what they did. And this is what it looks like. You get one of these beautiful images on your screen if you log on, and there's a set of buttons next to it. Now, you only have to press the button that best represents the shape of the galaxy that you see in your image. And you don't need to worry about making mistakes, because even though you might be the first person to see this image, it will be shown to other people as well to make sure we're statistically correct. Um, the other thing is, if you let people do it, then they might see things that you didn't ask for like this picture. I got this on my screen when I was about a week there. I was an amateur astronomer for a week. And I had to classify the galaxy in the middle, which I did, press the button. And then I was wondering about this little blue smudge in it. So I checked the examples that they gave, and it wasn't there. Now, I didn't think I discovered something new. I was just curious. So I sent this Chris an email, and I said, what's this blue stuff below? But he didn't come back to me for a while, for two reasons. One being that the project turned out to be a huge success. So Chris had many emails, people asking, asking him if they found a new alien or something. Uh, I mean, to be fair, kind of looks like it. Um, but when he came to my email, he didn't know what it was. He'd never seen anything like this. And that could be very exciting, but it might as well have been just a smudge indeed. It was the former, though. They checked the area, and it was actually there. It was not a camera defect or anything. Um, they also they invited me on the team to investigate this thing, because they looked through this data set of a million pictures, and this was the only one. So it's literally one in a million. And they had no idea what it was. During this process, it got the pet name Honey's Vorwerp. Honey is my name, and Vorwerp is the slightly boring word for object. Uh, it was made up by an English, uh, another English volunteer, because he knew I was Dutch, and I liked it, uh, especially because it's stuck in the official paper, so that's the official name now, internationally. Um, I can also tell you, you'll learn a lot from this if you're invited on the team, especially. And one of the things we found out about it is um, that it's actually green. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's the, one of the first things we found out. This has to do with the difference, the, uh, the filters the camera uses. Uh, the human eye sees it in green, so it's actually green. But what is it? It's a huge gas cloud. It's galaxy size, so it's very big. We also know its location. It's about 650 million light years from Earth. Now, to me, that just means it's very, very, very far away. Um, we know it's relatively close to the other galaxy next to it, with the slightly less exciting name IC2497. That was the one I had to classify. Um, and it's very bright and hot. And at first, we couldn't see any stars in there. So where did all that energy come from? We didn't know that. 
we do now, and this is how it works. They call it a light echo. Um, what you need to know is that sometimes these galaxies, they collide, and they leave behind all this gas, which is not as bright. And you also need to know that in the center of these galaxies, there are black holes. Now, they're known to absorb everything around them. But sometimes they turn active and they send jets out. And the patch of gas that's now known as Honey's Vorwerp was lit up by such a jet. So if you look at that, you're basically looking back at history of what happened to the black hole. So Honey's Vorwerp was a big discovery in every sense of the word, accidentally. Um, and many discoveries followed after that. So I think, of course, I think that scientific research is very important, and everybody benefits from what scientists learn. And I'm a big fan of these citizen science projects because everybody can be part of them, even if you're not a scientist. Um, if you are a scientist and you have an idea for a project for which you would need the help of all these volunteers, then you can contact Chris too um, at the Citizen Science Alliance, but if you are like me, you're curious, you're interested in scientific research, then you can just log on to the Zooniverse, thezooniverse.org, and help change the world from behind your computer screen. Thank you. Thank you.